two videos in one day, I know, but if you'll allow me to be self-indulgent for a moment. I was asked by someone I worked with in the past, what happened to you? In reference to me talking about what was going on uh, with Kelly Tran. You know, I pointed out that whether or not she is genuinely receiving abuse, this is now part of the Hollywood playbook to abuse your fans by taking whatever spurious trolling or whatever else you can find and spinning that into a story that everyone who has a problem with creative choices you've made or offers you criticism of any kind must therefore be, insert X here, racist, sexist, transphobic, homophobic, wh whatever else it might be. And that that's unfair and unproductive. But anyway, they, they asked what happened to you. And I don't know that that's exactly a good question, but it's an interesting question because really I haven't changed very much. I'm still the same progressive lefty that I always was, but the world around me has changed and it hasn't progressed. It has gone backwards. Okay, so this isn't offered as an excuse, but I have been suffering from severe depression and anxiety for 11 years now. So that takes us, you know, quite a way back, 2007, 2008 sort of time. Uh, you might expect someone who is suffering from a pretty severe illness to get a fair whack of support from their friends and, and colleagues, and from some I have from others not so much. Now the first flare-up of things that has got me into this embittered, angry, activist state that I'm in happened 2012, I think, um, which was about when the first new Lara Croft game was, was being announced and so on, and there was that famous trailer. And I wrote a blog called In Defense of Rape. Most people didn't read past the title. What the post was actually about was a defense of free expression, that we should be free to explore dark things in our fiction, we should be free to explore taboos, sexuality, anything, and that rape could be a very effective and powerful story device. To me, the argument isn't whether someone does it well, or not it's whether you should be allowed or not that whether you do it well is far too subjective and i've always been a fan of free expression now in response to that article a lot of people including people i'd worked with leapt on this kind of bandwagon of attacking me for my supposed views that rape was just hunky dory and i was contributing to rape culture or whatever else when really again it was just defending free expression. I mean, The Handmaid's Tale, which is doing so well as a, as a TV series now, is built around the concept of not only institutional rape, but institutionalized breeding. And yet it has a progressive message. You can't tell one set of people that they can do something and another set of people they can't on a purely subjective artistic basis. That just, it doesn't work. And your option as a as a consumer of media is always not to consume things that you don't like. And we seem to have lost sight of that. Now, why am I such a, a free speech advocate? And why, particularly when it comes to geek media, like games, tabletop games, card games, comics, films, TV series, all the rest, why am I so entrenched in this position that free expression overrides other considerations. Well, I was born in 1975, I spent the famous summer of 1976 in a bucket keeping cool, and I was basically a, a, one of Thatcher's children, I guess. I, I grew up in that period where a lot of the social fabric of the UK was being torn up, there was a lot of hostility to, still towards homosexuals. There was even Section 8 in, in proper memory. Um, sorry, Section 28, I think. Uh, 
so all of that was going on, and this it was also the period in which we had massive assaults on role-playing games by the evangelical right in the US, and many people hopped on board with that over here. I mean, there were literal book burnings and things. I wrote to newspapers in support of clubs that were being banned from holding their meetings in schools because parents were, were worried. Once I got on the internet, I was active in defending that. There was very little trace left online, unfortunately. Also, the music that I liked was attacked. Uh, the precursor to the comic I love, 2000 AD, was Action, which was heavily banned and attacked and censored and so on. Video nasties, punk music, heavy metal music, uh, even a passing interest in, in the occult like tarot cards or, or whatever else. All of this stuff was massively heavily attacked during my childhood, my teens, my 20s. Vampire, there was a panic around vampire as well, and the whole trench coat mafia. And, you know, we had people try to start fights with us in the street because we were goths and metalheads and so on, all because of backlash to that. So my many of my formative experiences growing up were in a political and social atmosphere that was censorious and and hostile in ways that are just too familiar coming up now. So part of what happened to me was that I grew up in this kind of atmosphere where Thatcher wanted to criminalise homosexual pressure groups and activist groups from even educating people. Uh, about homosexuality at a time where she genuinely wanted to put people who had AIDS into camps uh, at a time when so many forms of expression were attacked by hysterical media and it was moral panic after moral panic after moral panic and I kind of hoped we'd grown out of that by the end of the 90s into the into the 2000s and we kind of did for about 10 years things were things were pretty okay so part th yeah, that's formative important experiences that I that I went through uh, even seeing friends being not allowed to come and play with me because I was into that dark stuff you know things things like that so then we roll around to 2012 and I have this come up and I was completely blindsided by the lack of support that I got from most people I mean I, I thought the message was obvious I thought that most people involved in sci-fi, fantasy, horror, gaming, all of these things, whether they agreed with me on particulars or not, would at least have the same context for what was going on that, that I did. That they also, most of them, would have grown up in a similarly censorious atmosphere, even a worse one for those who live in the States. And so would understand that the freedom we had to express these things, to sell our games, to make our comics, to write our books and so on, had been bitterly hard fought and hard won, both legally and socially, throughout that, that, that prior century. And yet support was extremely hard to find. There were a few people who are still very good friends who spoke out for me, but most were conspicuous by their silence. And some people I'd worked with you know, joined in. So part of what happened to me was that first sense of betrayal that people were so scared and afraid of the mob this time for some reason in a way that they hadn't been when it came to the evangelists or the people who then assumed a, that everyone in a trench coat was a school shooter or whatever else. You know, they were happy to fight back against that. But this... No. And, you know, there, there were petitions to uh, make companies that I'd worked with before never work with me again. Uh, I had abusive downvoting of, of reviews of my work, all, all this kind of thing. You know, we, we know the playbook now. This was before it all really kicked off. And where was the support? It, it wasn't there. And people seemed disturbed that I wasn't backing down and apologising for defending people's right to free expression. Well, of course I fucking wasn't. I, I, I work in this arena, so my work is dependent upon my ability to, as freely as possible, express myself. And it's true for all of these other people as well, and yet they were going along with this censorship. So that definitely embittered me. And that was kind of like a, a dry run 
um, a taste, an inoculation of what would happen a couple of years later. And that's when we got into Gamergate. Many of these people still perpetuate myths about what Gamergate is. They claim it was a misogynistic hate mob, a, a harassment group, or whatever else. And it doesn't matter how much evidence you set in front of them. It doesn't matter that I wrote a whole book setting out the evidence. They will not listen at all. They will not accept that there is even another point of view. They won't read the book. They won't look at the evidence. I put everything up for, for free, even, as, a, as an audio book. Just will not countenance the idea that they perhaps have a, even a slightly wrong perception of what went on. And again, this was the people who should have been on Gamergate's side. This was the, the game makers, the writers, the artists. So many of them you know, within this sphere that had previously been attacked so much were now attacking everyone's ability to freely express themselves and were ignoring massive corruption. I mean, we'd gotten used in computer games to the kind of corporate level of corruption. But this was happening in the indies, who had always made themselves out to be better somehow, more ethical somehow. And it turned out the corruption there was rife. But because the first initial person to be outed as being part of this corruption, far from last, check out deepfreeze.it, because that first one was a woman... All of that opprobrium, which richly deserved for someone who is, is corrupt and lies and so on, was relabeled as misogyny and harassment and all the rest. And sure, there was trolling, and there was trolling both ways, and there were attacks both ways, and there was harassment both ways, some of it quite serious. But most of the actors within at least the Gamergate side of things seem to have been perfectly genuine and genuinely did want change, and they got some of it. But a lot of these people who should have been on board with that message, you know, we want an honest and ethical media and we don't want to be censored. What's so bad about that message? Nothing at all. And yet so many friendships burned over that and just would not listen. And these are people, these aren't strangers, a lot of them. A lot of them are people who know me and would know that I would not engage in harassment, that I, that I would not do these things. And yet they chose to believe the media that was being attacked over over me. You know, that that's a personal slight, especially for someone who tries so hard to adhere to principle. And yet that, that counted for nothing. They wouldn't wouldn't listen at all. And I was cut off from a lot of them. A bunch of authors refused to collaborate <laughs> on a work if I was in it as well, if I was alongside them. That's how absurd it is. And all I've ever asked for, agree or not, is that the media be more ethical and that creators not be censored by moral panic or law or, or otherwise. Yeah, and these arguments, these um, impositions that are coming down from, the, from this pseudo-left that has sprung up, they're the same kinds of things that the evangelical right was saying about sexuality and violence and all the rest of it. But somehow, because it comes from a, an ideological faith rather than a religious faith, somehow you seem to think that's okay. I cannot be on board with that. That goes directly against my, my core principles and my, my life experience. So you ask what happened. That's another part of what happened. Um, I was betrayed by my community. They joined in with the censors and the harassers. And the harassment that I got, you know, from this betrayal, that drove me to the absolute brink of suicide. There was no support on that, from well, almost no support from my old friends and, and colleagues on that. No, it was the new people, the good people, the principled people, that I had met within the movement that made sure I was okay and looked after me and, and so on, with a couple of notable exceptions. Like I said, I, yeah, I've had this illness for over a decade now, and you would expect people to be supportive and helpful, but the vast majority of them aren't. First whiff of trouble, or a sign that you're slightly off kilter, and they, they take off for the hills. 
and this is me who would do almost anything for people I count as friends, who was ready and prepared to give a kidney to a friend. And they couldn't extend me even the slightest benefit of the doubt or stop and listen to what I had to say or consider the evidence and would not act based on our history and their knowledge of me as a principled person. They would rather go along with lies than extend any trust to me. And that was horrible. And that hurt a lot. And that's part of what happened to me. And at the same time as all of this was going on, I have seen the political left, which I always counted myself as part of, you know, as someone who was against racism, against sexism, wanted greater economic equality, more social investment, things like this, who always saw the left as a, a liberal and progressive movement towards greater fairness and equality in society for all. That's equality in terms of opportunity before any of my more conservative viewers freak out. I've seen that left degenerate into a racist, sexist, uh, man-hating, middle-class problem-obsessed cesspool of illiberal censors and prudes and people that want to control rather than liberate who want to impose inequality rather than to lift everyone up to equality and that sense of betrayal has been really hard to deal with you know when someone who is a died in the wool socialist really anarcho socialist um is being straight faced called a fascist simply for standing up for people's rights or pointing out their sexism and racism which they have conveniently changed the definitions of you know that does hurt that does cut to the quick that is an outrageous thing to say to somebody like me i haven't changed my principles haven't changed the creative community has changed and become more repressive and regressive and censorious and the political left has become a mockery of everything it used to believe and it it disgusts me so that's something that happened to me yeah i try to be calm and objective on this channel but when you ask what happened to me i was betrayed my values were betrayed my friendships were not reciprocated I have been attacked unfairly, I've been censored unfairly, I have a reputation that I have no reason to have. I'm a perfectly nice, reasonable guy. Really, when you get to know me. Yeah, I wasn't being facetious when I said what happened to you, because I think you should be where I am right now. And what hap where is the divergence? When did people like you stop being against censorship when did you start becoming racist and sexist and horrendous to people just because they're perceived as being an okay group to be horrible to if you shouldn't be racist to black people you shouldn't be racist to white people if you shouldn't be sexist to women you shouldn't be sexist to men surely we can agree on that right apparently not you should have known me better than this uh, and this goes for a lot of you like i say i try to be calm i try to be objective i try to be rational but you ask me what happened to me and that's what happened to me and i think i'm justifiably fucking angry at a lot of you for the way you have treated me and the way you have failed to support me the way you won't even listen you've even blocked me now so you probably won't even see this my door is always open to people who actually want to talk and listen to me and come to an understanding. But so few of you fucking do.